all the food guidelines are are influenced by the Adventist church because they have had such a deep influence in nutritional sciences from the beginning, you know, if I'm not mistaken, they founded uh, nutritional sciences and the study of, of nutritional uh, endeavor back in 1917. So they, they the official study uh, at the university level of nutritional sciences that came from the Seventh-day Adventists who, uh, as people may know, are religiously anti-meat. They think that meat causes lustful feelings and maybe lustful actions. And since lust is a sin, therefore meat is a sin by uh, the you know, transfer to property, so I guess. But yeah, you know, so that's something that makes you feel, makes you do evil things. And so obviously it's an evil, it's an evil thing in and of itself. Obviously, you know, what this is, is you're eating more meat, you're getting more hormone, hormonally healthy, and you're getting, and, and your, your reproductive health is a, is a, is a benchmark sign of your overall health. And if you're not, if you're not feeling like reproducing, if you're not feeling like, uh, you know, having kids and having sex and, and, and doing those sorts of acts that beget, uh, the next generation, then there's something wrong. You're not healthy in some way, mentally, physically, hormonally, something like that. We notice this in animals. That's one of the, that's one of the benchmarks that we, we look for health in, in different lab animals, cats, mice, you know, gorillas, whatever, uh, in the zoo, if they're not reproducing, if they're not interested in reproduction, something's wrong. And so, you know, that's something that's, that's been a benchmark in, uh, in, in the sciences when studying animals for a very long time. So, not eating meat makes you less healthy and that makes you not necessarily want to fornicate. Maybe that makes you less fertile as well. And it can um, certainly less fertile, not saying that you can't have kids, but it can, could be more difficult. Fertility rates have dropped by over 50%. Sperm counts have dropped by around the same testosterone levels in men have dropped by, I think 55% since the 1970s. So, you know, this is, this is something that's dramatically affecting us and we're going more and more plant-based. We're eating less and less meat, especially eating less and less fatty meat, which is very important. Again, this is a, a vital nutrient. It's not just a calorie source. And so you will see a lot of these influences. This is why most nutritional, uh, nutritional science courses, especially at the, at the graduate postgraduate level, you know, masters or PhD programs is just in, in nutrition, nutritional sciences. These are basically all plant-based. They're just pushing plants, pushing plants. I think the the top nutritional, um, you know, uh, doctoral nutrition program in America is a place called Bastyr in, in Kirkland, Washington, which is near where I grew up. And so I knew a number, number of people that actually went to Bastyr because of, you just you run into these people because they they live right next to you. And that was what it was. It was just pushing plants, pushing plant, like whole food, plant-based diet. Like that was what they were pushing. I, if you can't, I mean, you know, as a nutritionist, you know, if you're pushing for a diet that can't even, can't even get you the basic requisite nutrients for life, how, how can you argue that that is our optimal nutrition that that doesn't make any sense to me you know you can't get b12 d3 or k2 you'll never get enough vitamin a because you'd have to eat six pounds of carrots like two and a half kilos of carrots a day to get enough vitamin a you'll never get uh you know dha epa they don't exist there you can't really convert ala into dha and epa or enough of it we don't really make enough of it ourselves you can get a bit of it i guess you could eke by but this is not going to be optimal you're not going to have an optimal up uh, uh development as a child. You're not going to have optimal uh, growth, development, and maintenance of your brain as an adult, especially an elderly adult. This, these are very important structures uh, or important um, uh, precursors for structures in our brain. Our brain is physically made out of these fats. 70% of our brain is made out of fat. 20% of that fat is DHA. So this is very, very important to build and maintain this. You don't just like build it up and it just sticks there and that's it. And it just never, never changes. No, you actually need to keep supplying it and keep rebuilding it and keep remaking and remodeling your brain. So you can't even get those basic nutrients and, and you know, forget for a second, all the, all the toxins that are in plants, you cannot get a basic complement of nutrients from plants. So why why are we even having this discussion? It's it's honestly just a very silly discussion, mm. and especially for a nutritionist who should damn well know that like <laughs> you know which nutrients we need and you know that they're lacking in plants. Like why why are we why are we trying to pretend that this is an optimal diet? 
Um, yeah, so you see them, you see their, their little fingers stuck into everything, unfortunately, and all these big nutritional studies, epidemiological studies, um, they come out of Loma Linda Medical Center, which is a seventh day Adventist uh, hospital and medical school. And, you know, the Adventist study, I mean, this is something that's widely quoted in the vegan circles. Oh, the Adventist study, well, Adventist, the seventh day Adventist study is studying, you know, the seventh day Adventist by seventh day Adventist. Okay. And, you know, they look at different health outcomes and longevity and things like that with the seventh day Adventist, but, and they're comparing it to the general population in America, but that's not exactly accurate because, you know, they're, they're religiously compelled to not eat meat, but they're also religiously compelled to not do other things. You know, I mean, they're not eating processed foods and crap like that necessarily. They're eating whole foods, which is going to make a big difference. Just getting rid of processed carbs and sugar, which newsflash come from plants, right? And so, and they also uh, don't smoke, don't drink, don't do drugs, don't uh, you know, uh, participate in lascivious behavior and other sorts of you know, dangerous uh, behaviors. Uh, that's going to make a big difference in survival. And, and, and we call it, talk about all cause mortality. I mean, you know, someone dies in, a, in a, an extreme sport or because they're driving too fast. It doesn't matter what they had for breakfast that day. Right. That's something that's something else. But what about, you know, death rates and, and heart disease and cancer and all these sorts of things? So I, you know, all cause mortality is a bit of a is a bit of a weird one for me. But either way, they're all cause mortality. Okay, maybe that maybe that's a bit uh higher. Maybe they have or or you know, they have a higher life expectancy and and um fine. But there are other factors going on there. And when you compare them to uh another group, the Mormons in America, who eat whatever the hell they want to eat. They have no sort of religious uh, compulsions one way or the other. They don't smoke. They don't drink. They don't do drugs by and large. And they also have the exact same increased life expectancy as the Seventh-day Adventist. So, you know, there are other things going on here. And, you know, so you can't say that it's, that's just the diet. So they, these are, these are, these are un, you know, dishonest studies you know, they have a lot of confounding factors. They have a lot of different influences, but they're saying it's because of plants. It's because they're eating plants and that's what it is. Well, actually it's not. There's a lot of other things that are going in there. And so you can't say it's one thing because you didn't do a randomized controlled trial where you only change one variable. And even when people go vegan, they generally don't change one variable. They don't just drop meat. They generally go to a whole food diet. They stop eating processed garbage. They stop going out to eat. They stop eating a bunch of sugar, drinking sodas, drinking alcohol, smoking. All of these things are plants. They're plant products. They're plant food. And they're stopping them because they're worse than other alternatives. And they got rid of meat because they threw the baby out with the bathwater. The meat was doing just fine. That was the only thing keeping them together for many years. It was just all the processed garbage that they were eating that was, was very harmful and drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes all plants. So they went to, you know, whole food vegan diet or whole food vegetarian diet. And oh wow, they they got so much better. Like I'm not I'm not surprised. Like no one no one is saying that you stop eating cake, muffins and soda and drinking alcohol that you're going to not get an improvement. I I don't think anyone would argue that. Mm. Uh the problem is is that you're conflating that with the elimination of meat because at the same time you eliminated 